we have yet another development with AI getting better and better. And that's with the new AI model from Google, which is Gemini 2.5. Now, models keep coming out, so I wasn't planning on making this video, but Gemini 2.5 is something special that we should talk about for a couple of different reasons. Now, yes, if you look at the charts, yes, it's done really well as far as it's increasing its capabilities. You can see here on different aspects, it's gotten really good. It's even uh, number one in a couple of different things, better than OpenAI, better than Grok on some things, although in other things, Grok is still good. So the thing is that now this is really up there on par with OpenAI, with Grok, with some of these other ones. So these are definitely the big three. These, this is definitely the big three of Gemini 2.5, of OpenAI, and, and Grok 3. Now, the thing about this is that you can actually access this. You can't, you can still use the, the regular AI from, from Google, Gemini, but as far as the 2.5, you have to go to Google Studio. So it's very easy. You can go in there, free access, and it's very powerful. So definitely recommend going in there and trying it out. I went through and tried it with several different things and it was very interesting, very capable. And that's the big thing here is that it's very capable because it has enhanced reasoning. Google specifically states that Gemini 2.5 models are thinking models capable of reasoning through their thoughts before responding, resulting in enhanced performance and improved accuracy. That's really important. In the field of AI, a system's capacity for reasoning refers to more than just classification and prediction. It refers to its ability to analyze information, draw logical conclusions, incorporate context and nuance, and make informed decisions. That's really important, and that's why this is one of the most powerful models out there now. Because not only has it been pre-trained with really important information, but now it can also access the internet so it can get timely, real information putting that all together, taking a step back, reviewing what it's incorporating, and then going through doing, going the, the, the reasoning aspects of this and then giving us this enhanced result. So yes, very powerful, highly recommend using it, testing it out. And that's the big thing is that we should be testing it with different models. I know some of us prefer certain ones like ChatGPT or Minstrel or Grok, whatever but you should always be comparing and seeing, okay, which one is giving me a better result that I can use now for, for whatever I need. So that's really important to, to have that type of mindset as well. And again, comparison. And remember, we're using AI literacy, so we're still verifying things. Although as just stated, it has definitely increased accuracy. So that's really powerful as well. Lots of times instructors might say, hey, I don't wanna use the AI because it gives me false information, hallucinations. That's right, it can, just like a real person can, right? A real person can give you false information. So the thing is, is that these AIs are becoming much, much more accurate by the week, by the month. The accuracy is definitely increasing. So that's why we need to consider, okay, how can I incorporate this into my teaching, into my learning, because it's becoming so powerful and so accurate as well. Now, the, the big thing about this is that this is really powerful for Google because they've been working on enhancing their AI capability in, in many different ways uh, to include multimodality. So with images, it's really powerful as well. So here's something interesting that I did is I went in to, to use their, their image generation and I asked it for a simple image here of a cool image of a futuristic robot getting hit by lightning as it receives a diploma from graduating the university. And it gave me this very cool looking image, not exactly what I wanted. The cool thing here is that you can modify the image by simply telling it, oh no, make it more realistic with lots of colors, have the robot wearing a graduation cap and holding a diploma being given to the robot by several different male and female professors. And it gave me this, uh, the robot's gone, right? So that was a, a little bit uh, not what I wanted. And then I asked it, well, what happened to the robot? And said, oh yeah, sorry about that. Um, here you go. And it puts it back in. So that's great. And then I gave it another modification. I said, make the art style more realistic, add dramatic lighting, and be sure that there are both male and female diverse professors and that the robot is reacting in shock by getting hit by lightning. A little humor there, reacting in shock. And then it gave me this, which was very interesting, very, very cool in itself. Um, not the best image, but still very powerful as well. And this is something that they are continuing to do by enhancing their overall capabilities with image creation, multimodality, understanding, and again, just a more powerful model. And this model now 
when you access it, this was through the Gemini um, image generation, but when you go to the Gemini 2.5 model and go through with that, notice that it has a 1 million tokens that you can use when you ask it questions. So that's really important too, as far as the overall capability and what you can do with it. That's really powerful in that a million tokens, that's, that's several books that you can put in there within the prompts, within the interaction. So, so that's really cool there too. But another really big, powerful thing about the capability here of the new Gemini 2.5, beyond its reasoning, which is super impressive, but it's also its ability to, to generate code for you. Uh, I, I, one of the previous videos that I made was talking about vibe coding, where, hey, you don't even need to know coding and you can just ask it and it'll create it for you. And there's still some limitations as far as you can do so much more if you do know some coding. But you know, I decided to actually look into this. So I decided to do some vibe coding to see, I don't know how to do any coding at all. I know a little bit of an HTML from back in the day, but as far as coding with JavaScript and all that stuff, I don't know anything. So I, I decided to, to play around because if you look at some of the promotional material for Gemini 2.5, they talk about how easy it is. And again, they have different videos. We're talking about, hey, they just put in a simple line of code a simple prompt and it generates all this code and all you have to do is copy and paste it and it'll work for you. So I decided to try that out myself. So I went in and I asked it to simply create a simulation for me dealing with professional communication where students had to navigate through different situations. It generated a bunch of code and I followed the instructions of simply capturing it and then pasting it in here within this editor p5js.org. Again, the instructions are right there within it. it. It tells you the instructions after it gives you the code. I simply followed that, copied and pasted in here, and then started it up. I, I played it, and it's a great little game that here you are, there, you're this little character, and you walk around and try to uh, find the little question marks, and that's a scenario. You go through and answer the scenario. It gives you different options. Again, things that are associated with professional communication. And then sure enough, if you can answer that, you keep going, keep going, answer all the questions. And then finally, you're presented with this little certificate of saying that you accomplished the, the task. You, you, you won and you're a professional communicator. So this is a nice and interesting thing in that this is really powerful because I was able to go through and make it. And again, I don't know any code. So I was able to create this and it only took me a couple of minutes. I, I did, uh, it, it was gonna be faster, but a couple of times it, uh, I didn't like something. So I went back and I said, can you change this? And sure enough, it just regenerated the code with those changes. And then there was uh, one error and I said, hey, here's the error. I copied the error and I said, hey, here's the error. What do I do? And it simply rewrote the code and said, now try it. And it worked. So that's the powerful thing of, again, this vibe coding. Now, I'm not ready to say that, hey, we don't need coders anymore because there's still a lot of things that go on and this is just a basic implementation. I think I can do, do even further or do even more and go further with this, but this is just something to understand that this is very powerful in that all instructors now could think about creating some sort of simulation like this and now a, a visual thing where there's multiple steps and and you getting your student to go through it so that they can practice, they can rehearse. This could be part of an assessment aspect. All sorts of different possibilities that now we gain from having more enhanced AI capabilities such as through Gemini 2.5. So that's really powerful for us to at least consider, to at least go into and, and try out for yourself because it's becoming easier and easier to create this type of code, to, to work with it, to make really interesting dynamic things. So there's lots of examples on the internet, lots of things going on that people are making, again, without having code knowledge. This is a fun thing. I, again, I wouldn't say we, we, we could replace our coders with this because there's lots of things still going on in the background. But again, the AI is able to do more and more of those background aspects for us. So this is something definitely to think about as far as how we're even teaching coding and uh, understanding the, the, the pros and cons of vibe coding in this way. So lots of powerful things that have come out from, from Gemini 2.5. It doesn't, I wouldn't go so far as to say that it's the best AI out there. No, but it's definitely on par. It's one of the top three right now. 
because of its enhanced capabilities. So this is just pushing the limits of AI more and more. So you can expect some responses that will be coming out shortly from, from Grok3 or from, from OpenAI or maybe from even the, some of the other ones like Claude, I'm looking in your direction. So a lots, lots going on here and I'm very interested in your thoughts. Have you created something with Vibe Coding with using uh, Gemini 2.5? Share it with us, put it in the comments so we can see what's going on because I, I would love to get more, more input, more, more thoughts on how we can use this even more within academia beyond the things that I, I've said in previous videos as well. All right, thank you very much and remember, Learning is for life. Thank you, everyone. Remember to like, share, subscribe so that we can continue to develop our overall community of inquiry.